Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is Professor Abdul Salam Yasin Taha from the College of Medicine, University of Suleimani, giving a talk on the normal chest X-ray. This lecture will be published soon on YouTube. You can watch the lecture by visiting the URL at the bottom of the slide. Most of the chest X-rays you will see will be normal. However, in order to recognize abnormality, you need to know what a normal chest X-ray looks like. General principles. Have a systematic approach to the interpretation of the chest X-ray. Interpret the chest X-ray in conjunction with the clinical findings. Always compare with the previous chest X-ray, if available, to assist for any change. And ask yourself, does my interpretation make a sense? Before we start, the images seen on a chest radiograph result from the differences in densities of the materials in the body. So the relative densities of the materials in the body range from the least dense or the black to most dense or white in the following order. Gas, that is to say air in the lungs is the least radiolucent is the least uh, dense or the more radiolucent, therefore it appears as a black shadow, followed by fat, the fat layer in the soft tissue, and then the water, which has the same density as heart and blood vessels, then the bone, which is the most dense of the tissues, and finally, metal forum bodies are the most dense. So if we look at this chest radiograph, we'll see that bones in the form of the ribs, clavicles, scapulae, vertebrae are radioopic. And the mediastinum in the form of the heart and the central mediastinum uh, is also radioopic, but uh, less than uh, the bone, while the uh, lung parenchyma looks uh, radiolucent uh, because it's filled with air. Before interpreting the radiograph, we have to pay attention to the patient identification details, like the name of the patient and the date of taking the chest radiograph. The X-ray view, we have uh, four X-ray views, the PA, lateral, AP, and lateral decubitus views. The state of uh, breathing or respiration, whether the patient is in a state of inspiration or expiration, the X-ray penetration, that's to say whether the film is underexposed or overexposed uh, or underpenetrated or overpenetrated. And finally, the state of the rotation of the patient. The first view is the posterior anterior view or the posterior anterior position. That is the standard position for obtaining a routine adult chest radiograph. In this position, the patient stands upright with the anterior wall of the chest placed against the front of the film the shoulders are rotated forward enough 
to touch the film, ensuring that the scapulae do not obscure a portion of the lung fields. The PA view is usually taken with the patient in full inspiration. And the PA film is viewed as if the patient is standing in front of you. So if we look at this picture, the patient uh, is in erect position facing the film. The chest uh, is in contact with the, uh, with the film. The X-ray tube is behind the patient and the direction of X-ray beam is from posterior to anterior. And the uh, resultant radiograph looks like that. That is the PA view. The next view is the anterior posterior or the AP view. The AP view is used when the patient is debilitated, immobilized, or unable to cooperate with the uh, PA procedure. The film is placed behind the patient's back with the patient in a supine position. The heart is at a greater distance from the film. Therefore, the heart appears more magnified than in a PA view. The scapulae are usually visible in the lung fields because they are not rotated out of the view as they are in a PA view. So if we look at this picture, the patient lies supine on the table with the X-ray film uh, behind the back of the patient. The X-ray tube is in the front of the patient and the direction of X-ray beam is from anterior to posterior. The resultant film looks like that. In the AP view, the heart is magnified and the ribs uh, are more or less horizontal. So if we compare the PA view with the AP view, the marker reads PA in PA view, while it reads as AP in the AP view. The scapulae in the PA view are seen in the periphery of the thorax, while they are seen on the lung fields in the AP view. The clavicles project over the lung fields in the PA view, while, while they are seen above the apex of the lung fields in the AP view. The posterior ribs are distinct in the PA view, while the anterior ribs are distinct in the AP view. The lateral position. <clears throat> in the lateral pos position, the patient stands upright with the left side of the chest against the film and the arms raised over the head. The lateral view allows the viewer to see the region behind the heart and diaphragmatic dome. The lateral view is typically used in conjunction with a PA view of the same side of the chest to help determine the three dimensional position of organs or abnormal densities. So in this picture, the patient stands upright with the left side of the chest touches the film. And the resultant uh, radiograph is like that. That's the, lat the left lateral chest radiograph. The final view used in uh, taking the chest radiograph is called the lateral decubitus uh, view or the lateral decubitus 
position. In this uh, view, the patient lies on either the right or left side rather than in standing position as with a regular lateral radiograph. The radiograph is labeled according to the side that is placed down. So a left lateral decubitus radiograph would have the patient's left side down against the film. The lateral decubitus view is often useful in revealing a pleural effusion that cannot be easily observed in an upright view since the effusion will collect in the dependent position. So if we look here, the, uh, uh, in the PA view, the uh, dual effusion uh, 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 gives what you call the meniscus sign, the uh, homogeneous opacity in the lower zone with a concave upper border. But for the dual effusion to be evident on a PA film, we need about 250 to 500 mil of a fluid before the effusion becomes visible. On the other hand, in the lateral decubitus view, as in this picture, it is very sensitive and can detect effusions as small as 50 ml because the fluid, the fluid collects in the depend, dependent uh, position. Well, there are three main factors which determine the technical quality of the radiograph. The inspiration, penetration, and rotation. So when we describe the chest radiograph as being of good quality or bad quality, uh, we are actually depending on these three factors to uh, make our uh, decision or description. Inspiration. The chest radiograph should be obtained with the patient in full inspiration to help assess the intrapulmonary abnormalities. At full inspiration, the diaphragm should be observed at about the level of the eighth to 10th rib posteriorly or the fifth to sixth rib anteriorly. So here, we compare the uh, inspiratory film on the left side with the expiratory film on the right side. We'll see that in the inspiratory film, the sixth anterior and 10th posterior ribs are visible. While in the expiratory uh, X-ray, the diaphragm is high and the pulmonary vessels are crowded, giving a false impression of uh, pulmonary congestion. Penetration. On properly exposed chest radiograph, the lower thoracic vertebrae should be visible through the harsh shadow. Additionally, the bronchovascular structures behind the heart like the trachea, the aortic arch, and pulmonary arteries should be seen. So in the state of underexposure, in an underexposed chest radiograph, the cardiac shadow is opaque with little or no visibility of the intra of the thoracic vertebrae. The lungs may appear much denser and whiter, giving the appearance of uh, pulmonary infiltrates. In the state of overexposure, with greater exposure of the chest radiograph, the heart becomes more radiolucent and the lungs become proportionately darker. 
the overexposed film often gives the appearance of lacking lung tissue, as would be seen in lung emphysema. So in a good exposure, we should be barely able to see the intervertebral disc through the harsh shadow. If we compare uh, the over penetrated film on the left side with the under penetrated film on the right side, we'll see that the intervertebral discs are very clearly seen in the uh, over penetrated film, while they are not seen in the uh, under exposed or under penetrated film, like the film on the right side. Rotation. Patient rotation can be assessed by observing the clavicular uh, heads and determining whether they are uh, at equal distance from the spinous processes of the thoracic vertebrae. So in the uh, film on the left side, the trachea is central and the medial ends of the clavicles are at equal distance from the spinous processes of the upper thoracic vertebrae. Therefore, the, there is no element of rotation. But if we look at the X-ray film on the right side, the medial ends of the clavicles differ in their, dense, in their distance from the spinous processes of the upper thoracic vertebrae, suggesting some element of rotation. Angulation. With the patient in a more lordotic projection, the clavicles will project superiorly relative to the upper thorax, causing some distortion of the normal mediastinal anatomy. Well, in lordosis, there is an inward uh, position of the uh, lumbar spine. With the lordotic projection, the ribs assume a more horizontal orientation. Occasionally, a lordotic X-ray can be obtained intentionally to better visualize structures in the thoracic apex obscured by overlying bony structures. So if we have a lesion in the apex of the uh, lung, like a small size pneumothorax, and we want to visualize this uh, lesion, we uh, uh, intentionally do the chest radiograph in a lordotic position. So if we compare the film on the left side, in which there is no angulation, with that on the right side, in which there is a lordosis, we see that the clavicles project over the superior uh, uh, part of the lung or over the lung apices. So uh, finally, if we review the basics of uh, obtaining a normal chest X-ray, we'll see that uh, the marker is a present, the name of the patient and the date of taking the chest radiograph are also present. We check the uh, tracheal position and the medial ends of the clavicles for the presence of rotation or no rotation. And we judge whether the film is over penetrated or under penetrated by seeing the lower thoracic spine. So the take home message of our short lecture of today about the normal chest X-ray, we, we would say that uh, chest radiograph is a cheap diagnostic tool, very commonly used by physicians of all specialties. Unfortunately, it is frequently misused and misinterpreted. Chest radiograph 
is sometimes overused or underused, thoracic surgeons have the opportunity of correlating the clinical features with radiographic appearances on chest radiograph. Hence, they should be more competent in interpretation of the chest X-ray. And with this uh, old picture of uh, at Tahrir Square in Baghdad at 1962, I would like to conclude my lecture. I would like to thank you for watching and listening. This is uh, Professor Abdul Salam Yasin Taha signing off from the College of Medicine University of Suleimani.